It's week 12 of the NFL, and this one features Josh Jacobs. He had a great week to build off of last time out, reaching triple digits and adding two touchdowns. It's the Raiders and the Hawks, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Today, it's week 12 of the NFL season, and we've got a good one in store between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at the Seahawks team as they get ready here. They come in off the extended break from the bye. I think it was much needed as well. You play two, two and a half months, you're ready for some time off to get set for the home stretch. On the other side of the field for the visiting Raiders, they've got a full half season since their last loss. Winners of eight in a row. And you don't get on win streaks like this without your defense playing a big role. They've created quite an identity, and I know they want and expect this streak to get to nine. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. Fielded just outside the goal line and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. That is the Raiders' takeover on offense. We get to see the man who has been the leader of this team for nine seasons now under center Derek Carr. And you and I both know that any win is a good win. And that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. Carr going to throw right away. Got a man open, it's Darren Waller. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's gonna get this down near the 25. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we could at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty, those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively, and it leads to a big play. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact on the next-gen stats. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. First rep of the game for Josh Jacobs. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Carr. The throw taken in by Cole. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 13-yard line. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. Jacobs on first and 10. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Now Carr. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far. But you know they don't want to waste it and set up for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And this 
this time he's got the hook up. It's complete. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. season trade now in his fourth NFL season Drew Locke you talk about the pause that refreshes I think it's come at a perfect time of the year for them hasn't it you know they it's the season is starting to wind down got a little bit of a break but how about the guy calling the signals he's got to be excited about that because now he didn't just get a game plan for one week he was able to work on it for two weeks I can't wait to see if they have anything special in, in store for him today and he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. On the ground, this is Rashad Penny. And just not much to be had there. One yard out to the 10. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. To throw it is lock. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield. And this might be a roughing call. Personal foul. Now you don't want to see that penalty at any point, but it adds a little extra to it when it comes on third down. It certainly does because if this were a boxing match, they had them on the ropes there. Third down incompletion, fourth down upcoming. Instead, that mistake resets everything back to first down which means they have to stay on the field longer to try and stop this drive. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Part of their struggles last week was getting these negative plays on first and second down. That's something they have to be wary of as this game continues. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Now Locke. That's complete to DK Metcalf. So the completion results there in nine yards. And now it's third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Play action. Now it's locked. Blitz coming and down he goes. Denzel Perryman with a sack. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And the Raiders will take over now, first and 10. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. We're scoreless after one. with the football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a second and three forthcoming. Uh -huh. 
Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. And that is incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Carr going to try and throw on third down. No, oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. That looks like it's going to be two empty possessions now to start this football game. I think they're going to have to sit down and talk about what worked for them last week in their win. Sometimes you over game plan, overthink things, get back to what works. They go with Jacobs. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. Oh, on the defensive side, that is so deflating. Not only is it deflating, they've got to look in each other's eyes on that side of the ball and take each other's measure. You've got them backed up, perfect situation, and what they said to you on the other side is, we don't think you can stop us. Went ahead and got it in that position. That should never happen. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Throwing now is Carr. He finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. And they'll use him out in the backfield and sometimes quite a bit. They're just trying to get him touches any way they can. Four catches a week ago, there's another one right there. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Carr. That's caught by Waller out left side. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. <laughs> and I feel a little bit like a traitor as a former defender because that big man did not want to go down and refuse to go down. If you're a defender and you don't get the right angle on a big tight end like him, he can run right through you like you're not even there. And he did a lot of that on that play. Car now on first down. It's complete to Cole, and he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. So first and goal from the 9-yard line. Again, they'll throw with Carr. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Oh, they were so close. That close to their first points in the game. Just needed to hang on just a second longer, but he couldn't complete the process of the catch through the jostling from the defender. On second down, Jacobs. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Pardon, I know we're in a goal-to-go -goal situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I would run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. They'll go for it. It's Carr. And that is Carr.
caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Foster Moreau, his second touchdown on the season. And the Raiders post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And that makes it 7-zip Vegas. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it winds up in six points for the Raiders. the Raider kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. Takes it at the 7. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Well, the final weekend of November is upon us. Boy, can you believe December right around the corner? Always seems to get here quickly. But coming up tonight, we wrap up the holiday weekend with the Packers and Eagles from Philly at 8.20 Eastern. Then tomorrow night, we wrap up Cyber Monday with the Steelers and Colts from Indianapolis. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, given 14. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They look to throw, it's Lock. Looking for Lock and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rocky Sin. And the Raiders are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. Before we came up to the booth, last thing he said as we were walking off the field, want to play mistake-free football. Well, that just went out the window there with a the pick. And do you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that? You're like, oh, fatal last words. Every time we hear that, Things tend to fall apart a little bit, and that's what we saw there. Didn't get enough on that throw, and it turned into an interception. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Now after the INT, it's Carr. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll look to throw here. They'll find his tight end. That's Waller. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. On first and 10, here's Carr. Got a man. It's Darren Warner. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. Open man, that's Renfro. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it into double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. 
And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Officially, it will go as a run yard run, so that's going to lead to a third down. Now another timeout called for by the offense, so that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. This stadium once registered as the loudest roar ever recorded, and you can hear them now, third and goal. To throw his car. And that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown. Foster Moreau as the first half is winding down. And the Raiders will extend their lead here just before halftime. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Carlson now to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a Las Vegas touchdown. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Right after the touchdown to extend their lead, now maybe opening the door a little bit there by allowing starting field position at the 40. Well, you don't see that often. He just mishit it, and it goes out of bounds. Well, I know sitting up here, and I'm looking at you, and you're looking at me, and I know we're both thinking the same thing. Isn't it easy enough to keep it between the sidelines? Because unless you're intentionally doing it for some reason, well, that's a costly miss hit, and now you put your team in a bad spot. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Looking to throw again on second down. Lock, and this a quick slant to lock it. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Lock now on first down. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, bye weeks, they're over. We've once again got a full slate of games to get to as we take you around the NFL here in Week 12. We'll start by heading out west to Glendale, Arizona, and those two are tied up as they play the second quarter. From there, we head down to the Sunshine State to check on the Jaguars at home in Jacksonville. And they couldn't get the job done as they fall to the visiting Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, terrific in the win as his guys up their mark to 7-4 with the victory. Finally, let's get right to the center of the U.S. map and check in on the Chiefs at home in Kansas City. And that game's all tied up as they play the visiting L.A. Rams. On now to a check on the next-gen stats for the Raiders in that first half. And they've definitely been able to exploit some holes in that opposing secondary as they threw for close to 200 yards in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Seahawks, they were on the other end of the spectrum in terms of passing efficiency. That's going to need to improve in the second half to come. Both these teams going through their final adjustments before heading back out of the locker room. Time for us to go back out to Lumen Field where we rejoin Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Seahawks trailing, but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter. Fielded right around the eighth. 
And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Throwing again on second and ten. Lock. Throw to Eskridge, complete on the out route. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. I'd say it's not panic time yet, but let's be honest about it. Empty possession here, not what you're looking for when you're down a couple of scores. Absolutely not. Trying to start the second half off on the right foot. Unfortunately, going to give the ball up. Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this one will wind up being down just outside of that 20 yard line. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 22. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This throw over the middle, taken in by Cole. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Chains now, second and two. Carr going to give it to Jacobs. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation... Go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Car now to throw. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. A turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. To throw on second and ten. Carr. Quickly a slant to Renfro. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Trying to run for it with Jacobs, and he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Mm. 
So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. From the gun, it's Carr. He's got a man complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. It's a gain of 34. It doesn't look like this defense found the magic elixir at halftime. This offense was rolling in the first half, and that's continued here in the third quarter. Another big play right there. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Carr. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. And the defense almost got one there, partner. That could have been his first pick. He's been good so far, but you're right. That was nearly a costly mistake. Sometimes you get a little bit too confident when the game's going along as it has been for him. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Jamal Adams. And the Seahawks force the turnover. And they'll take over at the 10. So that, Charles, may be the play that this defense has been looking for. They've hung in there, and if they lose this game, it won't be from a lack of effort on their part. The key question is, can the offense finally do something? Because we're into the third quarter, and a zero is still blowing on the scoreboard. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs. Because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. They keep it with Penny on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Locke. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try and run for it with Penny. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To throw it is Locke. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. Throwing now is Locke. And he wisely will throw that one away. The offense on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Now Locke. They'll roll him out right. He gets it to his running back, Rashad Penny. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. And a two-score game, obviously. Every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified. Big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Walker now on first and ten. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Here we go. 
The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From midfield, here's Locke. He'll get this out wide to Penny. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and lead the game out that way. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. They'll run for it. It's Walker. And this will depend on the mark. I'm not sure he pushed the line forward. And indeed, he did not. They stop him. So here are the Raiders now to take over. They've gone two months without a loss. Eight straight wins for them. And they've got the lead here in this one as well. Trying to make it nine in a row. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 42. He'll give it to Jacobs to start the drive. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. down they go with Jacobs again and I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line officially it's a one yard loss that's going to bring up second and 11 I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes last week he ran pretty much wild didn't he did pretty much what he wanted to do but this one they stopped him cold that to me that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. 53 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. Eventually wrangled down before reaching the 20, but a strong run. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left, as they call the timeout defensively. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Here's Jacobs. And he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. Josh Jacobs, his 12th rushing touchdown of the year. And the Raiders add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week.
Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Carlson on for the PAT. And it is now 21 to nothing. That time, a six-play drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Josh Jacobs. On is the Raider kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it now. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They were coming off the extra week of rest, but this team started sluggish, and it really didn't get any better from there. And trailing big here in this fourth quarter. Block now on first down. He's going to let it fly. And that's caught at the 25. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On first down, lock. Not wasted time going right back to DK Metcalf. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Jayon Brown. And the Raiders are going to take over once again, and they'll have it at their own eight-yard line. How about one last great play defensively, and that should, for all intents and purposes, finish off this shutout. That's as good a defensive performance as we've seen in a long, long time. And I know as a team they will celebrate. I will guarantee you the defensive guys, they'll get together somewhere and have their own private celebration. A shutout, that's something to be cherished. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. And they just continue to roll right along, really. This has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Once again, it's Jacobs, and he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. Two straight runs of five yards, first and 10. So this one, a victory for the Las Vegas Raiders. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. Well, they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way. But the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So for Las Vegas, they get win number 10 on the year as they move to 10-1. and one. And they will head home next week to take on the L.A. Chargers. Meanwhile, for the Seahawks, it's starting to look like it won't be their year as they drop to 5-6. and six. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to L.A. to take on the Rams.